Zeit 9000. What's happening, people? Welcome to another episode of the Everything 9000 podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a very special guest in the building today. We have Paul Midder. Clap it up, man. Clap it up. Man. <laughs> cheers, cheers. Bring the energy up here. You man. don't have to clap. You don't have to clap. <laughs> <laughs> Paul, what are you saying, man? How are you doing? Mate, do you know what? Life is good, man. Life yeah. is good. Uh, obviously, ever since we left the show uh, back in April, it's just gone wild. Uh, it's between nonstop, nonstop, but uh, trying to just enjoy each moment. Yeah. Do you know what? I'm looking over. I nearly had to put my cap on today because I'm like, this guy, perfect hairline, perfect <laughs> smile, perfect teeth. You're up and out meant to be this perfect. No, nah, 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 ain't never like that, man. Sharply yeah. lined up beard. Look yeah. at mine compared to yours. That's why I thought I was coming on this podcast, man. I had to, I had to look lean. <laughs> well, you know what? We got something lined up just to ruffle you up a bit. Okay. You know what? You're looking a bit too comfortable. No, I know. I was, I was getting very comfortable. Yeah. Yeah. If you... Part of the cloud gang, you know what's up. But if you're tuning into the episode for the first time, we'll tell you a little bit about us. So we're all about seeking that feeling of being on cloud nine. Cool. You know, when you have a sick day, you're like, you know what? Everything's going great. I feel like I'm on cloud nine. Yeah. So whether we're doing our challenges, we're seeking that feeling. If our viewers are watching, we just want them to have a bit of escapism, feel good. Yeah. And yeah, man, that's pretty you're much... You're getting me worried here. No, 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 no. <laughs> nothing to worry about. What we normally do when we have a guest come in is we kick things off with a game called Nine with 9000. Okay. So basically we have a special sauce made by, I don't know if you know about Soho Oak. Oh yeah, Mixed yeah, sauce. no, no. We've been to Soho quite a few times, especially with Verdi and uh, all of his... Bo- oh, right. Okay. <laughs> so basically they make this sauce just for us. It's, it's an exclusive sauce. It's called the tomorrow sauce. That looks dangerous. I don't, <laughs> if I have that, I don't think there will be a tomorrow. <laughs> 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 the, <That's> reason, the, <laughs> the reason why it's called a tomorrow sauce is because you'll feel it tomorrow. Ah, uh, okay, okay. <laughs> or maybe tonight when you've got your... No, probably tonight, show. man. Yeah, you go to the watch show. Good luck with that, by yeah. the way. But, uh, Cheers. Yeah, we're going to shoot these Don't wear white. <laughs> Don't wear white, okay. We've got the shot cups. Don't worry, if you have to take a shot, we'll take a shot. The rules of the game are, we're going to ask you nine questions. Okay. It'll be either this option or that option. Yeah. If you really don't want to answer... You take a glass of the chili sauce. So if I disappear at the award show, I'm going to blame you guys yeah. for this, right? <laughs> should, we, should we go straight into it, yeah? Yeah, I'm, I'm ready. Are you ready? Or do you need, like, do you need like, a bit of uh, up? Or yeah, no, I'm ready. Let's go for it. Okay. Let's get, but I'm ready. Let's Before see we go there, how, how are you with chili sauce? How are you with Do you chili? know what? I like to say I do have extra hot Hernandez, so I should be all right. Okay. Yeah, we just get like a little... Oh, I thought you were just going to neck it for no, a no, second. I'm just going to get like a little... <laughs> Oh, that's it. strong. Let's have a smell. That is strong. I kept it away from one of them. I don't even want to smell it. Oh, mate, that is. Uh, <laughs> that's yeah, not random. Right. You know, tomorrow. That's, that's, not, that's not the one you get when you go. You know there. what? We, we need we need to get tissues up while we no, uh, no. get it, them on the table. If we, we see some tears, it's definitely that. By the way, I did bring some chocolates. By the way, just in case we need it. Oh, okay. First question, yeah. Cool. Man United or Liverpool? Oh, Liverpool. I'm a big Liverpool fan. <laughs> see. No, I knew that. That's He's a Liverpool like, fan. Oh, you Liverpool fan? Nice, nice. Yeah. Okay. I thought I'd set you up with an easy one. I know you're a Liverpool fan, and I thought I'd get you just one. You know, get, let you get away with having a shot of the sauce here. Okay. <laughs> because the second up. question is United or City? Man City. I'd have to say City, just because uh, obviously I grew up as a Liverpool fan and we had the major yeah. rivalry with uh, United. So even though obviously United are not really in the question anymore when it comes to <laughs> our, I'm just putting that out there. But um, yeah, I'd have to. I'll never, I'll never side with United. I'm a, I'm a United so, fan, by the way. Oh, so. uh, okay. I'm just gonna leave. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, it's it's interesting to see, but I, like honestly, with the Arsenal City coming up as well now, I'm I'm supporting City at the end of the season. I think out of Arsenal, Arsenal fans, are insufferable man. Uh, true, stand. true. But I think out of Arsenal and City, I just don't want City to win four in a row. Mm. Uh, so for that reason, I'd probably go Arsenal. I can't stand Arsenal fans though. Yeah, honestly, I would rather City win that fourth than for me. After Liverpool fans, Arsenal fans. <laughs> Is it? <laughs> well, at least we're not at the bottom of that list, so that's fine. I'll take that. <laughs> number three. Do you want to go number three, Amrit? Right? Yeah. Uh, again, it's just linked to football again. Just following that on, uh, Stevie G or Mo Salah. That is, a that is a tricky question, actually. Club, I've got, again, do you know what? The first ever game I watched yeah. was the Champions League final 2005 when Liverpool won it game. and Stevie mm. G carried it. So for me, it's always got to be Stevie G. 
That's um, crazy. For your first game to watch know, that, that's crazy. That's what got me hooked into football. I yeah. remember my brother said, trust me, you've got to watch this game. And I was like, well, we're losing 3-0. Yeah. <laughs> like, what's the point in this? Yeah. I thought we were meant to be sporting Liverpool. Yeah, um, yeah. But that turnaround just got me hooked. And ever since then, I've been watching it quite religiously. So. Fair play, yeah. I would yeah. say, I would agree with that. These are quite nice questions, actually. Yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep, 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 keep it like this. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Drake or Kendrick? I've got to say Drake because I feel like Drake for me really changed the game. Mm. Um, he's the one that kind of introduced this new wave, and then for me, Kendrick came after that. So I'd say Drake. I think right. I think Drake. Agree. Yeah, Drake. Mm-hmm. I listen to Drake more than Kendrick, mm-hmm. but I don't know if you caught any of the rap beef recently. I think Kendrick won that personally. Yeah, no, fair enough. But uh, I'm still an OG Drake fan. Drake, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm ready. Right, yeah. yeah. So this one again related to music. Just following that one. Okay. Uh, I don't know how you like if you listen to much Punjabi music or not. I, d- I do. I do a bit. A uh, bit okay. of Bhangra, a bit of R and B, a bit of house. Can't go wrong. Like nice, a mix. Nice. So of uh, the Bhangra scene, would you rather pick Diljit or Musiwala? A tough one. Yeah, that is a tough one. A tough one. Uh, it's got to be Musawala for me. I mean, really? uh, just an absolute legend for what he stood for as well. Mm. RIP, of course. Mm. And um, just his tunes are just, they're very raw. Mm. I feel like Diljit's very kind of mainstream. Mm. Uh, so I prefer that kind of rawness there. Yeah. Oh, I mean, I, I guess Musawala's a bit of mainstream to a certain extent as well. I know, but the lyrics hit hard. The lyrics are like different. powerful. They kind of do you know they hit the, hit you in the soul sort of yeah. thing so when he's when he's well, at least it. some of them i think so yeah but obviously like i would say Diljit is probably the bigger artist yeah i mean obviously musiwala is passed away now so no but course, he, he left course. a huge impact itself as Mate, well. but, absolutely huge but what Diljit's doing for the punjabi well Diljit did uh, coachella didn't he coachella and coachella, then also that yeah. that recent concert he did where he, like it had the record number of sold out seats and stuff so and then he brought uh ed sheeran out as well ed sheeran, and yeah. ed sheeran. That, that was incredible it's, it's just so nice with, what's her name He's got a song with like all of them now, hasn't he? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Uh, I can't remember the names I either. But like, uh, he's got a song with pretty much every of the mainstream yeah. kind of like artists from Los Angeles. It. He's killing it. I, I think it's nice how he's bringing Punjabi culture into kind of mainstream culture. Yeah, uh, which is which has been massive over the last couple of months. I mean, you look at AP, mm. uh, you look at Sukha, you look at all of these guys. They're really starting to break in. He hates AP. <laughs> oh, do you hate why? <laughs> No. Why do you hate AP? Yeah, you said his name, yeah. Look yeah, like I know. I noticed you cringe. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> no, man. Am I gonna have to scooch over this? Yeah. Way, like? <laughs> no, yeah, there's just something about it. I mean, I don't hate him, but like, okay. I, I, I don't. I can see the anger in your no, eyes. No, no, no. <laughs> he straight, he straight up hates him. No, no, no I, I don't straight up. I've got to ask why. No, it's just like I, I don't know. I, I think he's overrated a bit. You, but in what way? In, in like pretty much every aspect. Really. Do you know the reason why I say this? Because my family all call me AP. Oh, so like, I, 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 I hear that. No, yeah. I was gonna say yeah, yeah, but then generally, like, there's no offense to you. No, <laughs> I know, I'm taking personal offense. <laughs> oh, because I just clocked actually because Amarpal. Amarpal, yeah, yeah. So oh. then my family call me AP. Oh, is your name Amarpal? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, that's my full name. Yeah. Oh, yeah, nice. Yeah. Do you do you get called? Just by Amr, by any family members? Uh, so my uni lot call me Amr. Right. Um, my kind of dental lot call me Paul, and my school lot call me Mida. So right. I just kind of, right. and then right. my mum call me AP. <laughs> so if someone just says a name and I just respond now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I certainly think AP's overrated, man. His tunes are not that I don't great. think I have that. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> you come across, like, it, there's some sort of, like, oh, I don't know how to describe it, but... It doesn't feel quite authentic with the way he comes across. Have you watched the, the documentary? Yeah, bro, like documentaries. You know what? I loved it. He hated it. Yeah. Like, I of course you hated it. Though. Yeah. No, no, no. But that's what I mean. Like he doesn't come across authentic. Like that documentary is a bit of a faff for me. I think like, it's yeah. almost like, look how original I am. Look how authentic I am. By it's, the way, we've ridiculous. had a whole episode deciphering that, like an hour and a half, and he's still kicking off about it. I know. <laughs> I feel like, I feel like you, you need to heal through this trauma, man. Oh, like, that's like, what I'm here for if you want me to hear that. <laughs> yeah, but I certainly think uh, overrated. If, overrated. if AP was sitting here, he was grabbing this bolt. I know, I know. He, he was chucking at you. Um, <laughs> I think you should do a chili shot just for that. Yeah, call it. No, it's got to be done. It's if one does the chili shot, everybody does one. So the whole uh, thing premise was that if you had to do a chili shot, then we would do. Oh, I will let you off. We'll so let you unless off. you guys because that scares me more than Lord Sugar. So <laughs> um, right now, that turned a bit controversial. Like moving onwards. <laughs> Is that five? We've done five. Yeah. Um, so talking to Lord Sugar, moving on to number six. Talking to Lord Sugar. This one. Do you know what? I've got my hopes up on this one because okay. if we don't get you on this one, actually it'll be the one after. Okay. But this one might get you. Tim or Karen. 
Oh, hundred percent, Tim. Tim is such a sound guy. Seems like a sound guy. Um, honestly, he's he's so down to earth. He gives you such good advice, and um, you know when you're going through the process, he, he's just. It's kind of nice to have him there because I think he understands what it's like to be a candidate. Yes. Um, so someone that kind of empathizes you in that way, and uh, yeah, we, we got on very well during mm. the show. So that yeah, Tim Tim's always, a good guy. He always pulls these mad faces. Obviously, what you see on air, I'm guessing, isn't the same, but. You know what? He's got a role to play. Yeah. Um, his role is to basically advise Lord Sugar of who the best candidate is. Yeah. Uh, so obviously, he's that his main job is doing that. So he's he's trying to empathize with you, but he's still got his job to do. Still his job to do. Yeah. Fair enough. This one. Listen, if you answer this one, I know my palms are sweating. Yeah. <laughs> fair play. If you answer this one, fair play. All right. But you know what? The sauce is there waiting. Don't forget. <laughs> Verdi or Phil. Ah, oh, oh, you've got me. <laughs> both, both, I'm proper tight with. I know. <laughs> See, I, I love Verdi because Ver, Verdi is just, just a pure-hearted guy. Like he, he's just such a lovable guy. He's like a little brother to me, and feels like an older brother to me. Mm. Um, we've almost got a bit of a family dynamic, but we're so tight. I mm. couldn't choose between the two. So that, I think you yeah, know what that means. As much as it's gonna stress me out the house, I can't believe you did that. I hope you appreciate this video, Phil, by the way. I hope you appreciate this. See, you you thought you were sailing through this, weren't you? I know, yeah. I know. You know, this is calm, man. Yeah. Just give me a small one, yeah? You know what? We don't have to do too much, and I don't right, know how cool. this is going to go down, but... Well, we need to check out the measurements, by the way, yeah? Because it's all right. We'll... it needs to be fully level. <laughs> I'm not going to pour out a, in a, pour in a lot, because I know we're not going to do what? it. So. All right. Mine clearly is the same size. That is not the same size. That, yeah, that's definitely the same right, size. But do you know what? Yeah. That's your fault. <laughs> do you know what? Let me have a, Actually, no, I'll take this one. Because yeah. I knew you would do that. All right, all right. Are we just necking it all? Do, do as much Whoa. as you can. All right. Do as much as you can. All right, fine. Let's do it. Let's do it. Cheers, guys. Love you, Verdi and Phil. No, you got to neck it, by the way, yeah? Oh. The idea is not to chew on it. Just swallow it. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't chew. Really worse than don't, don't, don't chew, just swallow it. Oh my god. I mean, I mean, yeah. Alright, oh, guys, are you gonna. Come yeah, on, man. Be... I'm gonna hold off on drinking water, but then the rest what of the podcast, the you'll just see me fuck? getting red. <laughs> Feeling uh, feeling wide awake. <laughs> nah, low key, I think that's illegal. Oh, should we keep the cups? Do well, you know we might have to. Do another one. <laughs> <laughs> now that it's settled in, that was all right. That was all right. Nah, <laughs> right. No oh, okay, go on. You go. Okay, but this one is: if you have to go in an interview with one of these two, okay, Claude or Linda? Do you know what? For me, definitely Claude. Mm. Reason why is I thought. Give me a second. Okay, that, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, no, I'm good. I'm good. It's uh, it's the water. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, for me, when I went in with Claude, he gave me such good business advice. <laughs> such... <laughs> no, I'm good. I'm good. I promise you, I can handle shooting. <laughs> so uh, he gave me such good business advice, and he and also personal advice. Mm. He was like, "Poor look, it was only five five days in a working week." Mm. Um, like if you try and do too much, you're gonna end up burning yourself out. Mm. And I really took that on board, and I took that advice going forward. With Linda, she ruined me. She, uh, it was like a one-way conversation. It was almost like hitting an unstoppable force. Right. Um, there was no kind of uh, bringing her around, but fair play to them. Got a lot of respect for both of them, and yeah, uh, <laughs> it's creeping up on my time. It, it is yeah. the one that made that. Years back, that guy you almost walk out of the, <laughs> out of the window. You always see that viral clip, don't you? No, yeah. I, yeah I, I mean, I used to watch Apprentice a lot, but I remember that interview. Wasn't it Claude that made him that do Claude they? is like notorious OG, man. Yeah. Claude, Claude is notorious, and yeah. um, I was kind of worried. Uh, he's that my favourite on there, to be fair. Like, I was hoping I don't get like a bad viral moment sort of thing, because that kind of <laughs> sticks with me forever, so <laughs> I'm glad that didn't happen. You know which guy I'm on about, don't you, where his eyes are just like... Left he right. was Asian. You see that on he Facebook? was Asian. Oh, um, I can't remember his name. A couple of years ago. What, the no, bo- more than a couple of with years ago. With the guys. boats? Where he did the boats? No, the so, boats? no, it wasn't the Asian guy. It was um, He basically royally fucked up his interview with Claude. Royally. Like, I royally think it was him. Then I he was like, okay, you can go. And then. Um, shot, sh- begins with S. Shub. It's him. Shubby. Shub. Sh- yeah, Shub, I think. Shub, something like that. Yeah, I think it's him. 
I, yeah, 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 I think yeah. I remember that. But yeah, he royally fucked I think he did like interview. Desi Rascals or something as well. I don't know if you oh. ever watched that. Yeah, he's the same guy did season two. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He did. He did. Uh, and like, he was so shaken up by the whole interview. <laughs> yeah. He was like, you can go, but then he started walking towards the window, not realizing yeah. which way he was going. <laughs> it's because they bring you up and then just like knock you down. Yeah. Like, okay, fair enough. Yeah. Thought I was going to get complimented, but maybe not. Yeah. <laughs> that's, our, that's our nine questions, by the way. Uh, yeah. And then- I wrote a tenth. I realize it's number 10. Yeah. You can ask it if you want. Okay. Uh, it's like a bonus question. A bonus question. A bonus great, question. Well, I'm definitely going to answer it because I don't think I could do that again. <laughs> <laughs> well, it'd be kind of uh, bad if you can't answer it. Like, okay, in terms of like, do you, uh, do you like your holidays and stuff, I suppose? I'm, I'm a big holiday. Yeah, yeah, all the time. yeah just sitting right holiday. now. Um, so if you had to only visit one continent for the rest of your life, would it be Asia or Europe? Which one do you think you can't live without? It's got to be Asia for me, man. Like mm. the uh, the culture, the history, um, everything you learn in Asia, the food, the homeland, um, the homeland like everything for me there. I've got a lot of fam- family in Punjab. Nice. Uh, so I would like to go visit them as well. Do you get to go often? Uh... Uh, yeah, yeah. Like we um, we, had, we always go to uh, Amritsar, we go to the Golden Temple, then we go to Ludhiana, where my nice. family's from. Um, nice. And it's just amazing to kind of see like your roots and where you come from. And uh, all my mum's side live there as well. So mm. we have mm. a great laugh. Loki, Loki, I'd choose Europe, you know. <laughs> Is it? How come? I've got to ask why. There's just something about sitting on a beach, overpaying for a cocktail. And you just can knowing you're getting beach. rinsed for a pizza. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> just, I don't know. That you're not going to be in Nice, France, we got paid for like those pizzas <laughs> by the beach side. <laughs> by the way, I'll tell you a story. We went to South of France here with a couple yeah. of our boys. And uh, <laughs> basically, we, we went to uh, Nobu. Oh, yeah, yeah. And we were like, you know what, last night, fuck it, let's go out with a bang. Let's have a nice meal. Can't go wrong. And he is so dramatic here. Yeah. Oh, my God. I'm so, <laughs> I'm so uh, dehydrated, so dehydrated. And they kept bringing out water, yeah, right? Yeah. Uh, they didn't keep bringing out water. No, he kept did. requesting water. And they were bringing out Fiji bottles and they okay. didn't even make it obvious they were bringing them out like in like a little thing where it was like so they by the way he was this dramatic he ended up going through four bottles of fiji water <laughs> well, why are we so dehydrated no, it was, what, what was going on the night before oh yeah sure that's what you're going yeah, no, yeah. Something like, that. like i wasn't requesting or kind of get another bottle it, it seemed like every time this went by the table saw the water bottles like down no, no, he kept asking up. for it and in the end they charged 40 euros for it that's how dramatic it's been. Four years. We realised for, for water. Yeah. For water. Well, well, I thought also like it, it was free, but then it obviously was <laughs> like you get the bill and you're like, why am I spending so much? Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what? Have you been to Ibiza? No. Made okay. water prices in Ibiza are crazy. It's like right. uh, like 30, 40 euros per bottle in like some clubs. It's crazy. So. Ibiza is yeah. just a rip off. Yeah. But that's what I'm saying. You're not getting that in Punjab, bro. So you, yeah, you know, yeah. Yeah. Asia they'll cause... give it to you for free, man. Yeah, like, just free. You'll get that for like, what, 10 rupees? There you go. <laughs> if that, they'll probably just give it to you. I need to, I need to but, get rid of this, man. This is giving me trauma. <laughs> <laughs> I've got PTSD from that, man. And I'll watch it, by the way. Just take one. Yeah. I, that wasn't too, that wasn't actually too bad. Wait, I felt it watching you, man. Like. <laughs> I'm all right with match and stuff, but that was crazy. <laughs> it was a good experience. <laughs> you know what? It was worse for you because you kept biting into it. I just wanted But to you have it. to, yeah, you have to because it just it's sits too bitty, in, man. Yeah. I have a word with the chef. <laughs> no, 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 mate. Get even spicier. <laughs> okay. I'll, I'll send that feedback. Yeah. But, Paul, what we want to know, yeah, we want to get to know you a little bit now. Cool. We want to get to know you. Do you want any more chocolate, brother? I'm good, I'm good. I mean, I don't have chocolate, I'm a dentist, man, I don't hear you. We'll cut that. What chocolate? <laughs> so, obviously we told you we're all about this feeling of being on Cloud9, Cloud9000. Yeah. What gets you to this feeling? Firstly, I want to know, growing up, your circumstances, why did you choose dentistry? Yeah, for me, uh, it was one of those where I wasn't, I didn't really know what I was going to do. Mm. Uh, I was just kind of going through school and my sister's a dentist and my sister-in-law's a dentist, a lot of my family are dentists. So just kind of growing up in that environment, you get, you get, <laughs> yeah. you, you everyone's got a family into, member. You? Yeah, you kind of fall into it and you yeah. kind of get interested in it. And um, for me, it was just kind of a no brainer I mean, you have a fantastic lifestyle, you get to help people, uh, you kind of get the best of every world in my eyes. So mm-hmm. that was a reason for going into it. I mean, Amrit and I, we both grew up in a Sikh household. We're mm. both lawyers. Yeah. Solicitors. It's the cliche in it. <laughs> That's it. Like, you only have a choice between doctor and lawyer. There's yeah. nothing else exists Medicine apparently. Medicine like that. It is. <laughs> Dentist, doctor, lawyer. That's it. That is literally a lot of what I heard growing up. Yeah. How much did you hear of that? Oh, mate, all the time. I think, I think my dad's biggest thing was education. He was mm. like, look, they, anyone can take anything away from you, but they can never take your education away I from you. That's that's classic. That, yeah. I've had that vast. Yeah, but it worked. It worked when I was younger. So um, 
Uh, for me, it was more like, yeah, I want to kind of get as much education as I possibly can. And then obviously you want to think about the future. And uh, yeah, when I went into dental school, I just really started enjoying it. Mm. Nice. Mm. Where did you go to dental school? So I went to Sheffield University, but oh. um, a lot of what I do is like cosmetic dentistry now. Right. So I never really kind of gained that interest in dental school. And uh, I was kind of there just kind of going through the motions. And then one day my whole life changed forever. Right. So uh, I was in fifth year. I was on clinic and, you know, I always used to be a bit late, like never kind of on it. And um, I came late to clinic and... Uh, we had to obviously just see patients in a bay and stuff and me and my mate were kind of hiding and we, were, we just wanted to go home and watch Game of Thrones because the new season had come out. <laughs> Standard. And I was like, uh, my tutor was like, oh no, you have to come back on, you've got to see this patient. I was like, yeah, but you don't understand, like the dragon's down, White Walker, it's all going to kick off. Khaleesi's coming. Khaleesi is coming, man. Um, but yeah, so I saw this patient and she goes, she goes, Paul, um, you know, I, you know, I, I, I don't like smiling. Um, she basically just had kind of a smaller tooth on, on one of her sides and she goes, uh, is there anything you can do? And in the dental hospital, you're there kind of treat decay. Um, and I'd hit all my targets. So my tutor was like, actually, there are things that you can do. You can do like a veneer, composite bonding, which you might have heard of. Mm. And um, all of a sudden he said, go, go home, get do some research. So I went home, started doing some research and started learning about aesthetics, symmetry, golden proportion, things like that. Presented it to him and he goes, OK, so what I want you to do is get a model made of a teeth. So that's exactly what I did. And she goes, show me what you're going to do. And I just really started getting an interest, almost like a passion for it. Then the day finally came where we did it and we did a composite, it took me like two hours. Mm. And I showed her in the mirror and she started screaming. Everyone ran around. Everyone was like, oh, Paul's messed up or something like that. <laughs> and uh, she, she was just so happy. Yeah. And and in that moment, it's like life, like cloud nine. Mm -hmm. um, and I just realized that I did that for you. Yeah. I invoked that feeling for you. And never in my life have I felt happier than in that moment. I said, every decision I make from now on will be where I can do more life-changing treatments like that mm. for other people. And then two weeks later at a review, she showed me a photo of her smiling after 30 years oh. and it was genuinely a beautiful moment. So uh, that's why that's why I do what I do. That was yeah. fire. That was so fire. Mm. Should we just call the pod after that? Yeah, that's it, that's good, that's good. <laughs> when you were 16, I read that you were watching The Apprentice and you said, one day, that'll be me. Yeah. Uh, did you manifest that and how much do you believe in manifestation? Oh, I'm a huge believer in manifestation. I know people talk about the law of attraction, but I'm a big believer in the law of vibration. Right. So I believe that everything is energy and uh, what you're vibrating on will determine what sort of life you live. Mm. So for me, if you're vibrating at a high level, then you'll attract the things, law of attraction, that you want to attract and manifest. Yes. So for me, I'm, I'm, I like to think that I'm quite a positive guy. I always like to see the positive side. Mm. Cloud nine, like to be on cloud yeah, nine. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so I think all I'd say to people is just always keep a positive mindset. For example, you know, um, you may get into like a car accident and uh, your car might get totaled. You might think, ah, oh, it's the worst thing that could have happened that to happened me. That happened to me like literally oh, is not it? too long ago. Yeah, I think you got proper stress about it as well. You're probably blaming AC. You know, my car's different <laughs> to the rest of the is it? <laughs> but then like, let's say if you made it to that journey, something worse could have happened. Yeah, so true. I always you think, well, you never know. You Everything never know. for a reason. Exactly. You might not understand God's plan right now, but everything happens mm. for a reason. And I always say, if you're happy where you are now, then you can live life with no regrets because everything has been a part of your journey. Mm. Nice. Mm. Yeah, that's deep. Very deep. <laughs> that is, that is <laughs> we went from chilies. And <laughs> I know, we went from chili shots to that, right? <laughs> well, I also read in another interview you did with the Dentistry Doc. Mm. Code UK? Yeah. And you said that you've learned the most from your defeats. Mm -hmm. Tell me about some of those defeats. You know what, I always say celebrate your wins, but from those defeats or losses, that's when you learn the most about. I always say it's not a bad thing to make mistakes. Mm. If you make a mistake, learn from, reflect on it, make sure it doesn't happen again. Yeah. Uh, one thing for me was when I was buying my first dental practice, um, I had to save up 35,000 pounds for the deposit for it. Mm. And I literally uh, just worked so much. And obviously lockdown happened and uh, just about saved it. And then what happened was I didn't realize it'd take two years to take over that first practice. Mm. So money was going out, but no money was mm. coming in. And it, it was probably because of my lack of expertise. And uh, it, it was probably the most stressful thing I've ever been through. I mean, I thought the apprentice was stressful. This was a whole different level because you've got no one to really talk to about it. Um, you're kind of in it yourself. You've gone, it's almost like putting everything on black and just going for it. Mm. So I think 
the lesson learned there was, you know, use the right team, get the right lawyers, get those that are dentally trained and stuff that can help you with it. Because I think I tried to do it all myself, oh, okay. but never be afraid to ask for help yeah. uh, because it's not a sign of weakness. It's just a sign of, you know, I don't know it yet. I'd rather learn from you. Mm. How was that leap of faith going into buying your own dentistry practice? Because if you think about it, like, if you don't want me asking you, how old are you? Uh, so I've just turned 30, yeah. um, and when I bought my first dental practice, I was 27, so I was probably wow. the, if not one of the youngest dental practice owners in the UK at that point. Yeah. And yeah, it was... Um, it's a scary thought, isn't it? Like, going out on a limb to buy a business. Honestly. Like, I can't even decide to, like, even if I... I've thought about, like, starting... Oh, you always have these ideas, don't you? Like, oh, I'll do mm-hmm. this, I'll do that. But, but you, actually doing it. So, for instance, yeah. obviously I was in a corporate law job. Mm-hmm. And I would say around the same time, I think it was around 26 then. Yeah. Uh, was I 26? I don't know. I'll have to figure that out. Yeah. But it's been four years since I've come into the family business now. Mm. Obviously, the, the business was there set up, but it's a completely different way of earning income. For Whereas sure. in the corporate job, you know, you, you've got a set salary. You know what you're getting. You, you, you have that safety that you feel comfort in. And it was a comfort. And yeah. obviously, it was a bit of a leap of faith going into business. And now it's you earn what you do mm-hmm. yeah i mean when when i first took over uh, i didn't really earn anything for a couple of months because you're just reinvesting everything back mm-hmm. in and i remember uh, when i first took over i was only had a hundred pound left in my bank account wow. uh, this patient was like oh yeah i want to get like composite bonding done and i was like can you come back in a month because yeah. i can't i can't find <laughs> all the materials yet but if you come back in a month i'll be all right yeah. so I, I think it's just one of those for me like uh, I like to risk it all and I always think do what others don't do today so you can have what they can't have tomorrow. Mm. Oh, nice. <laughs> Bang, there you yeah. go. We're going to have to put these together. You know? <laughs> these are like, we need to quote these as well. Like, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Let's write a book. It's <laughs> <laughs> uh, not let's... a fair play because I think it takes a lot of guts to go out on limb, especially at a young age like that. Mm. Y- you know what? It was just the passion to go mm. for it and uh, I just wanted to do dentistry in a specific way and I couldn't quite find like a job that suited me in Leeds. Um, and I'm one of those that I really wanted to invest mm-hmm. in all the technology and stuff, but you come, it comes a point in life where you're like, well, I'm doing it for someone else. Why don't I just do it for myself? 100%. There's that, you know, that's that up and down mentality. Yeah, yeah, that, that was, was that was. You know, that's the proper go, Punjabi. Go, that's it. I'm going to go for it now. It's starting to sound like my dad here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's talk about the name Vici. Why Vici? Yeah. So uh, there's two reasons for the name Vici. Uh, the first was I used to play this computer game and on the loading screen, it used to have this phrase called Veni, Vidi, Vici, right. which is Latin for I came, I saw, I conquered. I think it was Julius Caesar that said it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so for me, having the name I conquered was quite quite iconic. Um, at the same time, my brother's done so much for me in life. He's one of my best friends. Uh, I wouldn't be where I am without him. And he's called Vince. So having Vici shout and Vince, Vince is, yeah, shout out Vince. Um, <laughs> that, that was a reason for it, yeah. Nice, nice. Um, now let's talk about you taking this business to, obviously, The Apprentice. Yeah. That's where everyone's seeing you. Uh, we've obviously spoke about you seeing yourself on that program one day. But then how did the actual process come about? You know, did you just see it one day or applications are open? Yeah. yeah and also, like, um, what is the application process? Like, because I, I imagine, obviously, there's going to be like hundreds and thousands of people Oh, you know mate, what? honestly. You know I'm, I'm going to give you a little exclusive here. Yeah. Okay. When I was a little kid, a little you, right, <laughs> I actually applied oh. for Junior Apprentice. And, and... No way. Yeah, 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 yeah crazy. Yeah. And I got called to go to London. The mm. only reason I didn't go is because I never, I didn't even know what London was. I'd never been to of London. Of course, yeah. yeah. <laughs> How, what did your parents think of that? I didn't tell no one. My parents were like... I didn't really tell but was, it, was it like one of those things where everybody got called to do an interview? <laughs> <laughs> and you're saying it like I've reached a lot of stages, yeah. yeah. What, what, what? Lord Sugar looked at my application and said, You come here, bud. <laughs> <laughs> Lord Sugar, you know, he's too good. He's too good. We can't have him on. He's too good. I rejected Lord Sugar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you did too, bro. We'll no, come no, to that. No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, this, is, this is someone actually who did it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, just talk us a little about the process, how you began and stuff, yeah, in, in terms of like, how, how did it even come about to you? Like, oh, I'll go on The Apprentice. Of course. So, um, for me, uh, like obviously I had uh, the dental practice at this point. I was looking to buy one in Pudsey as well. And uh, I always had this idea of doing dental scrubs because there is a huge gap in the market. Like I'm in the industry, I know. Um, to get well-fitting scrubs, it's very difficult to get within the UK. One of my boys uh, said the exact same thing. Sorry to cut you off, but yeah, he's like, do you know what? And, and, and I've seen my boy that is a dentist. He really takes pride in his scrubs. Like oh, he feels 100%. like he's, that's his armour. You know what? Look good, feel good, do good. Mm. Um, and the thing is, if you present yourself well, then patients will also trust you. You know, you're you're looking after their oral health. Mm. Uh, you might be the one to take them on their cosmetic journey. If if you're not one to almost be an advocate of that, 
then how, how can they build trust with you in that way? So um, like, it, it's important. It's why, why do, um, you know, people in finance, why do they wear suits or, you know, in shirts, etc.? cetera? Mm. It's because um, they want to portray a certain look. And, mm. and it's the same with dentistry now as well. Like, and as content grows, dental practice has got Instagram pages. Of course, It's yeah. all fixed, doesn't it? Like it, it all adds into the aesthetic of the clinic. Um, all adds, because, you know, when people go to the dentist, typically they're nervous. Yeah. But it's all these little things about giving <clears> them the experience. I always, I always tell people, People, people will forget what you tell them. Mm. People will forget what you did, but they'll never forget how you made them feel. Yeah. That mm. is the most important thing. So uh, having that good experience in all forms of way is so important. Mm. So the, the plan always was from day one, I'm going to be taking the scrubs product yeah. mm -hmm. to Lord Sugar. Yeah, you got to remember that like, my dad is in textiles as well. He's, he's a wholesale textile there. So he's, we've got... Um, we, we've got all the connects all across the world to do it. We, you know, we import export cloth from uh, all over the world. So, uh, for me, it wouldn't have been hard to kind of so actually implement. Yeah. Um, but then obviously we all know what happens and, mm -hmm. uh, it, well, obviously I know we'll get onto that cause we're doing it in, in an order, but when I was applying to the apprentice, it's, it's a funny story. Actually, I was, it was new year's Eve. Um, and I was on lad Bible on Facebook mm -hmm. and it was something about the apprentice and it said, click here to apply now. And I just thought, you know what? I've always had this idea. So it was as random as that. It was as random as that. I was like, you know, so I've always like had this idea. Preconceived thought, okay, I'm going to go in. The application's open this day. You know what? Shout no, out no, Lad no. Bible, man. Let's shout out Lad Bible. <laughs> um, and thank you for plugging everything. And uh, I, I literally clicked on the application. I thought, you know, I've always had this idea. What's the worst that could happen? Mm. You know, nothing to lose, everything to gain. And uh, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a fan of the show itself. Uh, I've got so much respect for Lord Sugar, Karen and Tim. Uh, so for me, it was, let's do it. Let's see how far we can get. Keep Try and stay on cloud nine if I can. <laughs> and, uh, you know, everything's God's plan at the end of the day. Did it ever put you off? Obviously. Wait, wait, one second. What okay, was the process like of applying? Like, was it like a long form? It, Tell us yeah. about yourself. And then you have to chat shit about yourself. And then like, yeah, yeah. You you know what? What? In, in the boardroom. Yeah, yeah. You know what? Like, uh, I'll be honest well, with what you. What did I you write in your profile? Like? <laughs> <laughs> so I think one thing that got pulled up on mine was, and I didn't realize I'd done it, um, was I put body popping in the business acumen section, <laughs> which, uh, which probably isn't a business skill, but um, yeah, it's just a long form explaining yourself, what you want to do. Um, what are your skills, kind of what makes you interesting. Mm. And to be honest, uh, everything I said there was legit. Like I, I'm, I, I like to think of myself as someone that doesn't boast or anything yeah. like that. So because um, the, the, the normally it seems uh, when when they do read them out, like the, the kind of recipe <laughs> from those sort of forms is to just boast as much as you can. No, I know and it's then, true. Like, like, so it's refreshing. She's like somebody like kind of lit, not a bit more like kind of truthful and uh, you know what for me like i wanted to show this is who i am i'm not going to pretend to be someone i'm not uh, this yeah. is who i am if you accept me you accept me if you don't then fair enough at least i tried right so i remember watching episode one and the first time i came across you was towards the end of the episode when we were in the boardroom mm -hmm. and obviously the way the apprentice is obviously there's the element that they want to find the partner for lord sugar but mm -hmm. there's a comedic element there's the they're taking the piss out of the candidates etc etc so it's in a lot of the the jokes going on yeah uh I think they purposely put Verdi in a lot of the jokey situations to begin with. You know what they're saying that fair play to Verdi because uh, it takes a lot of uh, confidence to be able to be PM on the first task. I was just going to say, yeah, how, how did you have like that game plan in mind when you went in or is it like... You, you know what, my brother did tell me, uh, just be careful about being PM on the first task and stuff. But I said, look, if it's for me, it's for me. I'm not going to shy away or anything. I'm just going to do my process, be, my, be yeah. myself. Uh, but straight away when it was events, like Verdi didn't even hesitate. He was mm. like, look, lads, I've got this. Um, and he didn't know any of us. He didn't know our strengths, our skills. So um, it, it was a lot of pressure on him. And I remember like when we came back to the house, he was feeling it a little bit, but he took everything in his stride and boy, did he fight for his life in that final yeah, boardroom yeah. and got a lot of respect for the guy. So first um, one's tough, man. First yeah, because I was going to say like first one was all things like you don't want to obviously stay too quiet because I've previously I've seen people be sacked on the first one because they've just been too quiet. No, of course. Uh, and of course. then like, and then you don't also want, like put everything on the table either because if it goes wrong, it, it fucks up royally, doesn't it? No, I think you got so, a so it takes a lot of guts to really say, okay, I'll take it on. Yeah, that, that's <laughs> why I've got a lot. And I think all of us boys really respected him for it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, fair play to Verdi. Scary Cabrino. thought though. Like, did you, Honestly, did you for one moment think when the Lord Sugar says, oh, okay, then pick one. Did you think for one second, oh, let me just put my voice on. Was it just too late? You, you know what? If, if Verdi didn't put himself forward and there was a bit of like a, 
uh, hesitation or anything mm. like that from any of the other boys. I, I would have put myself forward. Really? Uh, yeah. I, I, I don't mind. I don't mind. And uh, I think my brother would have been cringing watching that if I'd put myself forward because he was like, just, just earned it. But you know what? For me, um, I want to make a good, good impression. Like people think The Apprentice is about winning or losing mm. a task. Mm. It's more about um, portraying who you are, what your strengths are, even if you lose. But if you've done a good job, then you've done a good job. Mm. Um, but obviously you want to try and win if you can. That's yeah. facts, because I, I saw at the end of episode one, uh, I think Lord Sugar had asked a question. You gave a response. And that was the first time I really noticed you on the program was the end of episode one. Mm -hmm. You gave a certain response. I can't remember exactly what you said. I was like, okay. okay. <laughs> yeah, you, that you, when I was like, you know what? Fair play. That was... I had nothing to take. When, when I noticed you, it was a bit like you know when Verdi just sat there, yeah, and he's just gonna look at the boys. We're gonna do this. We do that. And then your look on your face is like I think you were trying to get a word in, and none of the boys could at that point because Verdi was just going off. That's a good point. How much is it that there's actually just? funny stupid stuff going on or does the bbc just make it up a bit with the music no background I, they put? I, i'll be honest with you like a, a lot of it is what you see um you know you've got to remember we don't understand the process at all at this mm. point uh we have no idea what's going on we're in scotland we're in the highlands yeah um it's very cold as well and um we're trying to do a uh, corporate away day i think that task was yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Mate, like i've never done a corporate away day <laughs> in my life do you know what i mean i'm not, I'm not a corporate <laughs> type of person so it's brand new and um you know with verdi he's got an experience he's got experience in events so we kind of let him kind of lead the way in terms of his vision and we thought let's just try and enact that vision yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. what's it like you know that first time you were sat in the boardroom oh. <laughs> uh, when you come back from the tasks and yeah. stuff I'll tell you what like we flew back from the islands and we went straight into the boardroom and is the boardroom uh, in the, London, is it? All? The boardroom's in London, okay. and, um, mate, we were nervous. I mean, look, no one wants to go out first mm. and stuff, and um, obviously we're lost as the boys, and you're just thinking to yourself, like, all right, come on, just just try and think. Like, if someone says this, then what am I going to say? And um, you're right. just trying to figure out what Lord Sugar likes as well, you know? Right. Um, and... I've never felt more nervous than I was oh, yeah. in the whole process in that first episode. Yeah, I was going to say the first one because that's the first time you experienced it. You don't want to see. Also, what was it like being on the plane back? Did you think that, were you confident that you may have it in the tap bag or what were you like, what was the thought process? Or were you thinking back in my mind, okay, I don't think it went so well, but if I get dragged into the boardroom back with the last three, this is what I'll. Were well, you formulating arguments already? <laughs> <laughs> you know what it is? The way my mind works is, um, you know, I always formulate like different scenarios. So if X says this, I'll say Y, like, and that's just the way my brain mm -hmm. works. And I'll always try to get to that desired outcome. So I was always ready. Yeah. So anyone knew if they came at me, I was ready. <laughs> um, so you got to be prepared in there. You know, fail to prepare, prepare to fail, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, fair play. But I remember when I first went into the boardroom, I had proper imposter syndrome. Uh, I remember <laughs> the lights were on, the massive table. You've got some of the most successful people in the UK across from me just like what am I doing here crazy <laughs> I saw her on a TikTok I think it's the receptionist mm -hmm. she put a TikTok up and it showed almost a BTS of the boardroom in the waiting area it's okay like, yeah it looked like a bit of a set so there's loads of rigs up there in the actual boardroom itself what is it is it is it actually in Canary Wharf is it just like a set do you know what I'm actually not allowed to say oh no I know I know I'm not allowed to say I know sorry to be that really guy. you're in Pinewood and yeah, yeah, no, yeah yeah sorry to be that guy what I would say is um in the boardroom it, it definitely feels like a boardroom like I a boardroom. can tell you that so hey, you heard it here first yeah yeah, yeah, yeah it right. is <laughs> well, well, uh, you breaking your contract yeah. <laughs> is there anything that you can tell us about the process that you don't normally see as a viewer? What's yeah, that? you know, one thing I'll say is a lot of people ask me, uh, do you get 20 minutes to get ready? That's mm -hmm. always a question. And you legit only get 20 minutes to get ready. Cool. Um, and people sometimes say, yeah, but it's nighttime when you wake up and then it's morning, like the sun's risen when you come outside. It's because obviously you come downstairs, you got to have food, you got to get mic'd up. Mm. So there's a bit of a delay in that, mm. but you only do get 20 minutes. And it's safe to say I was probably one of the last ones each time, yeah. <laughs> along with Trey, actually. It's both me and him. Are you trying to get each one of your hair spiked? Yeah, no, 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 literally. We, we were both there. We were both quite late and we constantly kept getting shouted at. But like, no, 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 I need to make sure. Yeah. <laughs> also, what's it like? Uh, obviously, do you get cameras in your faces as soon as you wake up? Or are you a bit conscious of? Mate, legit. Like, imagine someone comes into Verdi's the room. about that a little bit, didn't he? About him saying, like, oh, let me just fix my turban before yeah. you turn it on. Um, like, first of all, fair play to, you know, all the production from The Apprentice because they really respected Verdi in that way. Mm -hmm. um, so they would uh, make sure he had enough time uh, to mm -hmm. look presentable in the way that he wanted to. Mm -hmm. um, but essentially, someone comes in, they turn on the light, camera comes straight in your face while you're sleeping in bed and they go, so you're going to EXO uh, today. How do you feel? And you're like... <laughs> <laughs> Give me five minutes. 3 a.m., man. <laughs> 
please give me two more minutes. I love my sleep as well. So, uh, yeah. Like, I can't believe you get 20 minutes to get ready. It takes oh, me an hour in the toilet in the morning every day. Mate, do you know what? Sometimes we get waking up at like 3 a.m., like oh, 3 34, and, and you just, you've gone to sleep at like 12 1. Um, so it is vigorous, but it's all part of the process, you know. Um, uh, as a as an entrepreneur, you're gonna be put under those hours, mm. so it's it's all a part of you that. Got crack on, yeah. mate. How, you got crack on. How was it representing the Asian community? Yeah, you know what? One thing that um, I felt quite a lot uh, was that I was representing quite mm. a few communities. You know, the Asian community, Punjabi community, uh, the Yorkshire Leeds community, mm. the dental community. I I did feel that kind of weight uh, a little bit on my shoulders because. I think for me, I just really wanted to portray, um, you know, ourselves in, in a good light yeah. um, and just someone where, you know, someone younger is watching and they're like, actually, you know what, uh, I want to do something like this or uh, hopefully I could open the door uh, for inspiration for someone else to do something like this where they may have maybe not thought of that previously. So, um, and, and it's nice to see afterwards, you know, so many um, young young lads and, and uh, people in general just come up to me and they go, you know what, uh, I really want to apply now or I really want to open this business, you know, what advice would you give? And it's just so nice to see. Yeah, because that, that was going to be my next question, actually. How has the response been off air? And, you know, you've been going around, how has it been engaging with I'll tell you what, that you mentioned. one of the things that I was worried about is, uh, you know, how is your reputation going to be after the show? Mm. And, and honestly, I, I've got to thank all the communities I represent, especially the Punjabi community, dental community. They've been so supportive, so loving. Um, literally 99.9% of all, all the feedback I get is, is always really positive. That's crazy. Um, obviously, there's a 0.1% from like user 237898 just, <laughs> just like cussing you out. But uh, that, that's fine. I'll take it on the chin. <laughs> we, we talk about that quite often, actually. We we found that there's so many haters online, man. There's like, you get a lot of trolls and I think there's a certain way you've got to deal with them. So my yeah. approach to dealing with trolls to Amun is very different. He's like head on like... Yeah, you know, just like straight replying. Like, yeah, yeah, and I'm like, yeah, you okay. know what? Just, just fuck it. Like, you know what I mean? Like, just uh, you know, what? like let let people say what they want, and like, if anything, you just go back to them, be nice to them, and confuse them. I don't <laughs> know what your, kindness, what your yeah. take is. There is, you know, where, where there's that Gandhi, or if you slap this face, you put the other cheek. Out. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's you know what? I, I always say what people do is their karma. How you mm. react is your karma. So, mm. um, I think the what I would say to to anyone is, um, you know. People do read the comments. Uh, you might not think that the person that you're trolling is reading it, but they, they are going to be reading yeah. it. So uh, there's no no need to try and put them down like mm -hmm. that. You know, they put themselves out there. They put themselves, uh, to, to be fair, to be scrutinized, either in a positive or negative light. But um, I always say, you know, what, what you do is... a onto yourself and but people do read them so mm. just be careful mm. um, I'm going to take you back one little bit sorry I know okay, we, we kind of moved on but you know the process I don't know if mm. you can, how much of it you can say okay when you are filming like are you in that house for, like a long time or is it like oh you go away you do an episode then you go away and come back or no that's a great question so we, we live in the house the entire time you're in there Jeez. Uh, so, so how long were you there for like how long the uh, a very long time a very very weeks, long time right? yeah yeah to say the least so um, you, you're literally away from family, you're away from your friends, you're away from your business. Um, and that, that was something for me that was quite hard to deal with because I, I love my job yeah. and I, I really try to look after my patients as much as possible. But credit to the Vici Dental team, they did an, an amazing job uh, looking after everyone in my presence. Yeah. And I, I wouldn't have been able to do the show without my amazing team. So uh, It's good that you were able to then hand off the reins a bit too. Yeah, 100%. And, and, and in a way, it was quite um, a good, good thing for me because I, I've been so hands-on, so involved. To be able to take a step back and to still see that the team can carry it forward mm. was, was amazing for me because then it's like oh okay maybe maybe I can take a little bit of a step back yeah. you know I don't need to be so involved and <clears throat> uh, yeah I learned I learned valuable lessons off that yeah, for it sure it means that you can take longer hot as a guest I can, I can, I can, I can go to uh, Ibiza and pay <laughs> for some water yeah, yeah. <laughs> how much of the reaction was fed back to you or did you get after each episode so we did you get a feel for what the public were thinking yeah and stuff like that? I, I think for me like i only really came to the fray um on task four mm. uh the discount buying task and i remember uh in the previous task which was the vr one that was when i hit my lowest point that was when um i felt like you know i'm doing things right I, i'm trying my best but I, I wasn't getting like the accreditation i thought yeah. i should have been getting and and i just hit a proper low point i remember trey came up to me and trey was like look man um 
you may feel like at this now, but now is your time to step up. The, the only way to go is up from here. Mm. Um, so I literally came out on task force. I was like, I'm going to take no prisoners. I'm going <laughs> to go for it. I'm going to just put myself forward. And then that's when the oysters and the, uh, the mm. royal... Royal Jersey you potatoes. Got them cheap, man. I know, I know. Still, people come up to me going forty two p, forty two p, which is which that is was, mad. That was some of that pretty brown privilege, bro. You got me <laughs> on the ropes, man. You were like, you know, what? you know, what? <laughs> you know what? I was, like those wise. You know that one pound fish, man. That, that was it. That, that's what I felt like. I was like forty two p oyster, man. Come on, dude. Come on, dude. <laughs> that's it. That's a proper banging tune as well. <laughs> Let, let's talk about the deal. Cool. Right. Yeah. So I knew this was going to come. Yeah. <laughs> You're offered potentially 250 bags. Mm -hmm. They're all saying to you, you know what? Forget the scrubs. Mm -hmm. Even though they don't get it because they're not in the industry. Yeah. Fair but they're just looking at the the, pe the papers, the balance sheet. Yeah, they're saying, yeah. look, you've got a business here doing 900 odd K mm -hmm. turnover, whatever it is. That's quite profitable. Um, let's invest in that. Mm -hmm. And I think you came back with and you said, okay, we could do it for the new practice that you want to buy. Yeah, Pudsey, yeah, yeah. But you didn't want to offer your existing bit. Mm -hmm. I actually fully agree with that. Oh, I appreciate that. Thank you. you know, you, you watch, even if you watch Dragon's Den sometimes, mm -hmm. right? The people that come in, yeah, some people get good deals, but some people get ripped off, man. Like giving yeah, away 30% yeah. of your business mm -hmm. for, I don't know, 60K, 80K. In this case, it's 50% for 250K. Mm -hmm. For a, for a turnover for a business that's nearly turning over a million, yeah. there's another one in the works and then your turnover is obviously going to increase. That, that actually sounded like a bad deal to me. I don't yeah. know. Yeah, so uh, essentially what happened was, um, you know, I, I bought my first dental practice quite low, but then uh, what we do, it's a bit like, imagine you buy a house, right? You mm. buy a house for 300K mm. um, and then you, you renovate it up, you switch it into different rooms, you extend it. Mm. Now that house is no longer valued at 300K, it's valued a lot yeah. more, right? Yeah. And that's essentially what I did for the first dental practice. You know, the turnover increased massively, we introduced so many new treatments, we refurbed it all, new machines. Mm. And that's why I got to the value that it did. Mm. And um, overall, between both practices, the value was over 2 million. So mm. To give that for 250k for 50 percent you know I crazy could, even giving one practice uh for for what it was 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 still not a fair deal from my side but i thought exactly you know what lord sugar's uh, credentials and uh for everything i want to do so i thought i gave a fair enough offer but when he came back with that i remember that was the longest second of my life i was just <laughs> uh, what you what you saw is what actually happened and i, I just remember just it's like imagine just life paused mm. uh everything stood still and I just remember thinking, I think I had my hands together as well. And I just remember thinking, um, like, why Guru? Like, uh, you know, whatever I say will just be divinely guided in that way. Like, that you can't make a wrong decision here. And mm. in that split second, I just thought, I can't, I can't do it. I can't do that. You as, gotta go with I, your gut. You gotta go as much as I would have loved to have been the apprentice winner. Um, it would have been an amazing thing for mm -hmm. me. Um, and and credit to Rachel and Phil, both fantastic uh, entrepreneurs. But for me at that point, it was just no longer right for me. Mm -hmm. So that's why I had to turn it down essentially. But um, I I, fair enough, man. Now, uh, now a couple of months on no regrets probably uh, one of the best decisions i ever made mm. because after that i realized actually maybe i do need a partner here mm. and um you know we were in talks with with that side of things as well uh but my cousin ricky is a fantastic dentist one of the best cosmetic dentists in leeds and um, you know we came to an agreement and we've both gone into this together and what he's done for the business i wouldn't have been able to do in a million mm. years Crazy. i mean uh, the the partnership we have, the way we kind of bounce yes. off each other. It's a bit like you guys, in a way, you know, you like... It's not. You're, 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 <laughs> is it not? Right, yeah, fair enough. No, no, okay, fair enough, fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> I'll send you some clips. Yeah. 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 Okay, fair enough. Right, maybe I won't use that as an yeah. example then. But it wouldn't do it justice now. No, it wouldn't do it justice. I get what you mean. Yeah, yeah. Um, like we're, we're literally like best mates. We went to uni together um, mm. and, and his family. And, you know, we've got this thing where if... Uh, if one of us needs help we're always happy to help if one of us needs to go on holiday we'll do it like mm. there's no we're not answering to each other we're mm. doing it um, together. together yeah um and i think that was the most important thing for me having a partner or an investor so it worked out in the end oh uh, mate honestly it's worked out the best way it could have but to be honest like also i just want to say uh, that, like and you mentioned about you know like choosing almost not to win the apprentice mm. I, I have you like realized have you spoke to any of the previous candidates who perhaps may have won like mm -hmm. it may not be always like turn out to be like what it is kind of made out to be right because i think a, a few of them if you look back on the, some of the interviews like some of the people that won like about a decade ago mm -hmm. it, it's not always like kind of uh, well i mean 
That depends on the business, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. It depends yeah. on the candidate, it, the business. It depends yeah. on the person. Like you, you know, you're getting two hundred fifty k. Yeah, and you're getting Lord Sugar, who's going to open up a lot of conversations and doors mm. for you. Yeah. So that doesn't mean it's a magic wand. Yeah. No, of course. I don't know, but I think yeah. So it, t- it would have taken a lot of guts, man. I but I think what you had there is you had a proof of concept with your first dental practice. Yeah, for sure. I, and, I, I know what anything, I'm doing. It kind of like know? confer affirms what you're doing is right, isn't it? If somebody's willing to put that, if somebody of like his status is it's, willing to yeah. put money in. It, it was nice to get that accreditation yeah. from him for sure. But um, yeah, for me, like I know what I'm doing. I've got uh, you know fantastic mentors. Uh, uh, they're, they're called Jin and Kish, they're in the Smile Group and um, you know they own a lot of practices and uh, they've always mentored me throughout my whole career so I've got people that I can go to and stuff so you know for me at that point it was more like uh, it was more just do you want the jubilation of winning but at the end of the day this is my life mm. and this is for the rest of my life mm. and and I just thought at that point I couldn't devalue myself like that and it's funny I go you know out into the East Bradford community or even the dental community and they, they all say the same thing that um, they probably would have been quite disappointed a bit like what you said if I'd taken mm. that deal mm. um, so so for me it's just uh, it, it what's been nice is to receive the love mm. from it uh, from those communities as well. They, like I was on the uh, Nagar Kitten in Bradford mm. uh, a couple of weeks back and you know so many people were like, you know what, Lord Sugar didn't support you, but we're going to back your business, we're going to book in. <laughs> nice. and, and it's been so nice to see that. And that's, it, uh, that's what I love about being that's kind of in Leeds. So yeah, that's, that's a straight like, like for me, that's better than winning The Apprentice yeah. uh, in, in my eyes because... It's a to, lasting impact. Yeah, lasting. And to have that support from people like that is just amazing. And, and you know, credit to the Leeds Bradford communities because... You know, you're really, you're really helping us in that way. Mm. How product oriented are you going to be going forwards? Obviously, I saw you got Vichy Pods now. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then Vichy Retainer Pods. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then also, obviously, your original idea for scrubs. For sure. Are, how much are you going to pursue those? And yeah, so um, the scrubs thing. So my cousin's actually started one, and um, and it, and it's going very well for him. Uh, but what I realise is I, I want to be more of an investor now mm, right. because I'm because I'm so plugged into the dental business. Just to, I want to be able to enjoy my life as well. I want to be able to go on holidays. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so so for me, it's about having balance in life as well. It's mm. important. So um, with the with the Vici Dental Group now, we've got two dental practices. Uh, we're going to get a third next year. Uh, we've got products like the retainer bo- pods and other products that we, we do sell. Um, I've also got a dental marketing company as well called Expert Media and Technology. And then now we're actually going to be launching an app uh, because a huge thing at the moment is medical tourism. Right, right. You know, uh, people are, in dentistry, for example, people are going away to uh, other places in Europe and mm. they think they're getting uh, veneers. But what they're actually doing, so veneer is where you remove maybe 0.5 of a millimeter. So let's say five, five to 10% of a tooth. Uh, and then you can get, you know, cosmetic veneers. Mm. But abroad, you're actually getting crowns. Like Turkey. Like Turkey, for example. So veneers the invisible thing, isn't it? Like the, you, you put in... Uh, I wouldn't say invisible, but um, no, it just basically enhances you. That's like composite bonding in a way. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, sorry, um, I have no idea. Oh, no, it's cool, it's cool. Don't worry. <laughs> and um, with crowns, you remove 50% of the two tissue. So people think they're getting veneers, but they're mm. actually getting crowns. 50% of your tooth tissue can lead to infections, you loss of the, the loss of the teeth, and it'll lead to like loads of bite problems mm. as well. So I had, a, I had a young lady in the other day who did that, came to me, absolute pain, and she ended up losing teeth for that reason. And oh, no. she's only very young, she's younger than me, so um, it's a huge problem. So this app, because I, I, obviously it's patents, dep- mm. patents pending, but mm. it's essentially to help the UK public be mm. aware of what they're getting and to helpfully, hopefully help them from saving them from going through that journey mm. of irreversible tooth damage. So the point of the app is to give out information, is it? Uh, give out, but also to book with uh, qualified clinicians that are on a government register, such as like the General Dental Council for us, uh, so that they know they're going to accredited clinicians that can do those treatments for them in kind of a, a safe manner because mm. uh, at the moment it's just very unsafe yeah yeah um and that, that that's what basically the app is without giving too much away you'll hear <laughs> yeah, more about yeah. it soon yeah that brings you nicely on to what are your goals what is the legacy that you want to leave behind yeah for me the most important thing is you know you get one life like this mm. um you get one life uh, like the way you are so i want to be able to help as many people as i can whether that be in dentistry whether that be in the app for example so everything we do we do for the right reasons we've got we've always got a positive why yeah like we don't none of the businesses i've ever started have been because oh i want to earn more money mm-hmm. um that that is a byproduct of that but it's, it's always been about patient-centric first how can we help people how can we make this 
um, you know, dental practice more technologically advanced to be able to produce better journeys for them, more um, more desirable outcomes mm-hmm. for them. And that's always been our push. And, and for that, that'll never change for me. So if I can help as many people in that way as possible, that's my legacy. Nice. So it seems seems quite dental oriented. Did the thought ever cross your mind, having been on The Apprentice, that maybe you consider some influencer route in some angles? You, you know, you know what for me, like, um, I like fair fair play to influencers and stuff. They they do what they do, and I, it's just not a bit of me really. I'm mm. I'm more um, like I, I love to be able to to have fun, show what I'm doing in my mm. life. Um, but I'm, I'm never doing it, you know, to try and get uh, like like a deal or anything like that. Um, that that's never been my prerogative. It's always been about like, for example, I don't um, align myself with any brands. I don't use myself. Mm. Um, so uh, I'll only tell you what I actually really advocate. And if I can share that knowledge, then that's that's all I'm about. Mm. I mean, I, you've had people like Molly May go mm. on Love Island before and, and she's come out and done interviews and she said stuff like, do you know what? Love Island just merely just pushed the journey along a mm-hmm. bit quicker. Yeah, for sure. It didn't really do anything because I was always going to achieve my goals anyway yeah and it seems that that's also a bit of the case for you you were always going to achieve what you were going to achieve maybe the apprentice just got you out there a bit more yeah but. I mean like you know you, you're viewed in front of 10 million people each week so it, it's right. just about kind of it, it gave me some form of credibility to the UK public yeah and also um, some visibility for you but more than probably for the yeah. businesses as well no think, exactly yeah. and and you know what it's not about what you got it's about what you make of what you got mm-hmm. and you know fair play to Molly May she absolutely smashed it in mm-hmm. terms of that probably the the most iconic person when mm. it comes to that so um you know a lot of respect for her and uh, there's so many what was great to see from her is uh how many people she's inspired mm. um to you know to try and follow her same she almost created a path that now other people can follow and and if i can do that in some form of way even if it's for one person mm. that's my job done really crazy yeah my, uh, I've only got one final question. Unless you got anything else, Amrick? No, no, no. Sorry, yeah. no, no. My mine was: Are we getting any discounts at Leechy? <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna like, any I discounts? Leechy, you know what I mean? <laughs> You're getting appointments. Is it possible yeah. to get appointments with like dentistry? Yeah, like, I don't know yeah. if it sounds tough because doctors, if you don't get on at eight, <laughs> eight o'clock in eight ten o'clock, seconds. On. No, no, dentistry is definitely not as tough as that. I would say, but um, you know, if you guys want to come down, I was gonna say I saw like half the Apprentice cast from my season. Yeah. Uh, so we did a lot of their kind of smile make makeovers and just their general dental oh, uh, nice. journeys which has been great because you catch up with them as well yeah, yeah. Um, and we're all proper tight like we're like one big family um, as I always say I'm in a whatsapp group now oh, well, I'm oh, not yeah. allowed to say but uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean one can assume one can assume <laughs> can we open um, it up <laughs> yeah. I mean you're invited if you want but um, you know it I always say, you know, I might not have won The Apprentice, but I came out with a family. Um, yeah, and for me, that's definitely a win in that way as well. Yeah. So. Yo, you killed it, man. And no, thank you so much for coming that. on this. Pleasure, we appreciate man. it. Pleasure. Nice to meet you. Thank you, you for having me. Yeah. Nice uh, thank you for tuning into this episode of the Everything 9000 podcast. Catch you on the next one.